Carol here, warm welcome, and it's a morning welcome. It's almost quarter to one in the morning, and I'm finally getting my project with a voiceover. As you can see, I am using the Explore and Discover set. I am taking out this bottle and the little message that it has in there that says, I love you, and we are going to color this to give this a beautiful glass bottle that was found on the ocean. And you know what we're going to use? The Wilton 10-piece gum paste tool set, like I said, by Wilton. And it has so many different tools in here that the crafter can use. Now, many crafters had a cake business or, or made cakes before they reached out into crafting uh, with cards. And that and I had a cake business. And I saved this set uh, and so glad I did because you can really put it to good use. It has the nice big round ball and the small one has a cutter. It has, look at that, it just has goodness. That's what this has. And then it has the wheels that make the marks in it, you know, like tire treads and uh, all the stuff that we're going to need to make this bottle look like glass. As cute, as cute as can be. <laughs> I meant as close as could be, but cute is okay. You know it's after midnight. I don't know how much brain cells I have left, but I'm going to use whatever's left on you uh, this morning. So what I did was I have this Stampin' Up! Uh, mat, and you, what you, you want to do is you want to indent the outer edges of whatever glass jar uh, hopefully it's this set because you because you're gonna love it to do masculine cards I mean you get 15 stamps beautiful big stamps and you're wanna gonna press you wanna gonna <laughs> here we go it hasn't been five minutes and I can't talk this isn't good is it may I thank you for watching the other two videos uh, I really do appreciate it of the cover. Uh, let's start over here. Okay, we're going to color. Once we get some of the, uh, um, what can I say here? We've pushed some of the cardstock down and we're getting that curve on the bottle. We can start coloring. And I chose to use my Copics and I will try to get the names for you. A lot of these are the gray tones and I wanted to really zoom in here so you could see when I'm pressing down on the other side of the bottle I am getting some realism believe it or not in this and now this is a shell uh, gum paste tool it, it's shaped like a shell and it's going to give me those crackle the crackle effect I want for a vintage bottle in the ocean. You know, it stood the test of time and it has all these little water glass cracks going through it. I love that. And here's the tiny wheel attached to this Wilton set. So this set is a good set to have for making glass look realistic. Vintage, should I say, more vintage realism into it. So I will take the shell and I'll run it across. I'm going to press a little deep in there and I'm going to use the C family, the cool family, and it will be the six. Now I wanted to make it look like see-through but that you're going to see the C bed through it which is going to be in the blues, hues, in the greens and all kinds of colors in here. So we'll take it one at a time. I wanted the top, which you can see the cork part that we're going to cut off, but I used that wheel. It has these little notches in it, and I want the look of cork. And as you know, I've seen cork things, and I ha I'm using a cork uh, piece of uh, board for this that will resemble, hopefully, a little bit of sand. And um, yeah, and I wanted it to have that cork look as, you know, we get along and I show you what I have here to represent the sand that the bottle's kind of going to fall out of the ocean onto that. 
So let's start with the, uh, we had the C6, then of course I had to lighten it up. And I just wanted to show you, if you have this set, darken up the top. You're not, I'm going to cover the actual uh, cork part on the top with cork. So it doesn't matter to have the it colored. But I wasn't sure at this point I was going to do that. So you can see I am taking the mint green, the light blue, the grays, and I'm going to actually go over top of the grays to the left because you want to make yourself an area that has an oval shape for the glass when it, you know, is settled on the bottom. It is going to have, um, this one isn't because it's going to have a note coming out from it and it's going to be out of the water. So you can imagine a little bit of trickled water inside there and we're going to use Glossy Accents, a product like it and make it look like you know more realistic glass when we move along. Now the flicking technique with the Copics really works well here. It looks like we've got some bangs going on on a head doesn't it? <laughs> yeah and that's good that's good that's a good effect and we are doing everything with the dark tones on the left and we're leaving the right side kind of light and we're going to put the light grays, the dark grays, and then it doesn't look like much now, but you are going to put a lime green and a teal blue, and this is just the Copics now. We're going to move into inks after. We're just setting a base on this 140 pound cardstock. So here we go. I will smooth it out as many times as I can to not have uh, too many lines going on there. So I will flick the light gray up and um, you know I'm going so fast I really can't catch it but I will put it on my blog because I know which colors I do use um, when I go over there and I look at them. So I'm not too worried about doing that right now but you can see this really light light pretty lime green I'm putting in there with the light blue. And then I'm going to cut that fiber. I'm going to break it up so that it has the lines I want through the glass. This was my focal point. I really wanted to concentrate on this glass bottle and make it look very vintage and very old and very uh, pretty. Let me just say pretty. If there can be a pretty glass bottle, this is it. And this set, I think, if you are looking for something that can also make masculine cards, don't forget to put, uh, this is a pale, uh, I don't know, white brown. It has the peach in there, but it's very pale. I want to make sure I get that color for you because as you can see, it's darkening at the top where the cork is, where that brown uh, color is going to come through. And if you watch my tutorials, you do know that I apply many, many colors and until I get until I get the look um, that I want, you know. And it's just, uh, I love to practice on this. And, and with color and with Copics, you can go over it many times. You can see I'm taking a light uh, teal going over top of the gray makes that color that it's going to look like it has a base with water in it. As you can see, I will go over the bottle, I keep the center nice and large, and then I'm holding my um, marker straight up and down. I don't want to drag it on the side, I want to have some control over which sections I use. And then I go back to this really pretty brown, um, I don't know, it reminds me of coffee creamer. Very nice. And I want to get some realistic look in the bottle on the top where the cork is going to set in, as you can see. And to get this look, I went to the Wilton wheel. It has this wheel in there. It's really tiny, but it makes the indentations that I want for the cork and for the top of the glass. And I really had a lot of fun with this. I did speed it up, but I wanted to show you the lines that this wheel, there it is, 
that you could see. And I'm going to go across uh, vertically. There it is. Um, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. I wanted it to match this color in the wood. That's why when I went to my Copics, I went towards that uh, brown hue with uh, beige, almost a cream to it. But I will leave it. And you can see here, I'm really working the paper. Uh, you're not going to see this underneath the, the um, Versamark or crystal glaze or whatever it is you're going to use to give it that wet look. And you do want to hang on to it because you are breaking up the fiber. So you're going to have to have control so it doesn't rip. And you can see from here, the bottom of the water that I'm representing is going, it's going to be this color. That's why, you know, with glass, you have to know what's on the bottom to have it shine through it and to get that uh, look. Here is, oh, it's got to be six zeros on this. Uh, I think it's a BG with six zeros. I'll uh, certainly go, it's a blue-green. And then I'm going to remove some of the color. May I say this, when you're Copic coloring, don't use your blender pen too often. I mean, you can if you're used to that, but try to remove color with lighter color. It really does work wonders when you do that. And you know the flicks that we put in there? See how the gray is, is flicking up and I'm going to go over it with this wheel to get some natural um, uh, look of cut glass, a vintage glass. And now, like I said, I'm taking dark away with the light, and the lighter color instead of the white blender pen. And I'm getting to be super duper happy with the way that it looks and just play around uh, and see what effect you like. You don't necessarily have to work on the back of this uh, as far as getting the um, realism of the cracks in that. I may slow this down uh, just a minute. Okay, I took it down just a little bit. I'm dragging the teal up into the flicking technique that I used with the dark gray and uh, the deep gray. And then I made sure that I had the cracks. See the C colors I wanted in there? This is not going on this page, obviously, but I did want to work some of the colors that I'm going to use in this project, which is close to these teals, blue, green, uh, ocean. There's the glass, and now we have to work on the rope to tie at the top. I really love that Angie has this included and I'm showing you those flicks that uh, really does play its part in the actual performance of this stamp and the coloring and you can make things look like they're three-dimensional just by your coloring uh, and all that is is a little bit of practice and do I get enough in? Of course not. There's so much to do but I try to take my time and practice, practice, practice when I'm doing the actual project. So that gives me time and I don't, I make sure I have time when I am doing a project so that I don't have to hurry. And uh, yeah, so here I will add more uh, flick marks and I'm going to add an oval on the bottom. I have an oval in the center. I have a small oval in the curve of the um, neck of the bottle and all of this really does work together. The um, You can say kind of like the sun when it's in the water because when you hit water with water you know as far as the, the uh, bottle and then the sun outside the water then you have the ocean uh, there or the lake wherever you're you know thinking that you're creating for and one side I want it to be darker because the sun is not going to come through the water all at once. You're going to have a dark side and you're going to have a light, a deeper uh, color and I really
try to get this movement in here and uh, and and it's nothing I didn't see anything it's just something I thought of as I'm looking at this what will it look like what will old glass look like there's the colors that I used right there it's not anything very bright but you can stop the uh, video to see exactly what colors. I think that was a little pink I snuck in there. And now I'm going to soften up. I take a light color to soften up my dark colors. Very seldom I use the blender pen. I'm just going to say that just one more time. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's one o'clock in the morning. Yes, happy one o'clock in the morning. I wonder how many people are up watching this. And I decided to keep this one in the video. This cover is the back cover, the page that you're going to look at when you open the book. It's not the final back cover. So I wanted it to all kind of intermingle. And uh, you can get this set at Michael's. So I'm just going to put that in this video because somebody might ask. I'll try to find a link. Now you cannot put that paper inside your bottle if you want the bottle to be the focal point. Otherwise, all of this coloring would have been in vain and all you would see is the paper. And as you can see, I did work the paper, the I Love You there. I worked it and worked it to get it to look very vintage. Oh, that's coming out a lot, isn't it? Yes. I'm going to rub it with my fingers. Don't be afraid to do this. And this will actually help you to see how much of the glossy accents that or whatever you're using you need to have on there and um, this is the crystal glaze so I want a lot of crystal glaze I want this bottle because I did make that curvature in it with uh, using the stylus you know the large stylus ball um, of course I will add more to the center than I do on the outside parts and I didn't put as much of it up on the lid of the bottle then we'll cut that cork off, put some cork on top. And you know this project, it didn't take long at all. It is not a long uh, project to do. And you can transform it into a card. It doesn't have to be a cookbook like I'm doing. So um, there it is. It's good. Yeah, just leave it. I'm going, okay, Carol, it's fine. And you can see how I brought the sunlight down through the bottle. There's another look at it. I put this very, very slow for you. And if you like that look, uh, really, you're just making a lot of ovals and circles when you're uh, designing something. You can see the background color. It's all different colors. It's not just one color. It's just not green or blue. You really have to work colors and you have to use your imagination to think what would that look like if it was seated on the bottom of sand you know where mine is going to be just cut it's going to be in the water and on land at the same time and uh, this is the front cover so I wanted to, uh, to have that by my side just to see what colors I was running through the book. And it'll give me an idea for this page because I did not have an idea on the actual design yet of what I was going to do. Now, this stretchy cord bothered me. I knew it was going to crush something if on my page. So I thought, you know what, Carol, that's going to have to come off. And that's okay. But I didn't think of taking it off for a little while, so I cut my paper down where I had that little notch on the bottom, you know? And uh, I'm just getting everything ready. I might need some powder on my project. I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, I grabbed that. <laughs> Can't tell you why. Yeah, so I hope everybody had a wonderful day. My husband and I... Um, went and did some work at his uh, sheet metal shop. I, you know, I helped him, you know. And uh, then we went out to the docks and I saw my um, seagull. Oh yeah, I saw my seagull. And uh, he was right there as soon as we started eating. And uh, yeah, 
So that was fun. And we had fish and chips like we always do. Oh, it's the best. Sat it on a bench and had our dinner early. I think it was about 3, 3 4 o'clock. And here we go. There's the distress inks I used to make my glass bottle. I chose distress inks other than the pigment inks. I'm, or excuse me, the uh, hybrid inks. But as you can see, hybrid inks play a part in, this is alloy, the gray. They play a different role in certain projects that you use. I wanted to have that creamy look and so the oxide uh, seemed to be what kind of ink I wanted to use. And this is my LDRS Creative Design Team project so you know I want to make sure that I put our products and uh, I have the products and I order the products uh, from uh, LDRS Creative Shop myself. Uh, I do get supplies sent to me to design like this, but there's other things there that I love, you know, like the markers, the Karen markers. I ordered those, and it, uh, I just think that LDRS, look this. May I stop? I'm bragging about LDRS. You can't help it, but look it. This stenciling to me is almost like uh, embossing with embossing powder when it gets to be, you know, uh, goes from powder to this beautiful uh, liquid look you know this is this is what this seems like and you can ghost this too just by moving a little bit of the stencil over to get a dark and a light but it, it's so funny after I got done this piece I kept grabbing for it it looked like it was cut off sitting on the uh, paper it, that's how real this looked. I love this mermaid stencil. It's called uh, well, Mermaid Shimmer. That's what it's called. It's right in front of me. And I think it's beautiful. I hope there was uh, uh, many people that went over to uh, watch Angie tonight. She knew, oh yeah, I love this. He's saying, I love Mermaid Shimmer. Uh oh, oh, she's going to hit my tail if I don't get out of there. Yes, she did the, she, uh, Angie, sorry, Angie, she created from the back page. So she used the stamp set that I'm going to use on the back page of this uh, cookbook. It's a uh, fish. This is a fish cookbook. Everything to do with fish and lobster and uh, all kinds of recipes are going to be in this book because this is called Seaside and it has everything to do with water and I thought well you know what you could make a card right let me stop and say that this could be a card front right here even though I'm putting it on my six by nine inch cookbook cover I wanted to make sure every page could be transformed created into a card for you and um, that's kind of the look I'm going for and here I have my bottle off to the right hand side as you can see and I am applying the color to the stencil close to the colors that I Copic colored into the glass bottle. And I, I really am happy with it. And when you see the stencil they really do come together. Uh, and, and I didn't put any tape down, I'm just holding it because I'm doing it in sections. So I thought, oh I don't need tape. Uh, that's when accidents happen when you do that, but I thought I'm going to try it and it's the same colors as I used in the bottle with the oxide inks and is this not pretty? Look at it. It looks like something sitting cut out and sitting on that white sheet of paper. Beautiful. And that is my 140 pound uh, cardstock. I, I don't know, I really do love this stencil all the stencils that we received in this collection, the summer collection, they are wonderful and they're affordable. That's another key word, uh, affordable. And all my nice soft um, applicators here are from my dollar store where nothing's a dollar. I paid about $1.25 to $1.50, it depended on the size. Uh, some of them came with three to a set, some came with five, 
So they were about $2.50, $2.50. Uh, very inexpensive, very inexpensive. So check that out and see uh, if you can find some at your dollar store, dollar store where nothing's a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting serious here. I'm getting quiet and serious as I'm watching this because um, even though it's not a real difficult, I'm going to say card to make, but uh, cover to make if you're going to join me in making a recipe book, it's not, but it's so pretty at the same. Isn't that pretty? And how easy is that? All you did was color in the bottle, cut out the I love you paper, and uh, then we're going to design, like actually have a design. And I don't end up using this die that I was, I did the front cover and the back of the front cover with this die. I didn't use it. I decided to go with the whole square. I just couldn't miss any of those beautiful, um, that design. Do you notice they're all going in a different way? It reminds me of a waffle, you know, a waffle cone. I know some think like it's like the fish scales or mermaid scales or uh, something like that. But I think of a waffle or cheese cloth. <laughs> Generally a waffle though, and uh, it's they're all going in different directions. It kind of has motion. It's beautiful, just beautiful. So I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to trim it. It truly does look like it's just sitting there, doesn't it? A couple of times I did go to grab it from the bottom. It was crazy. This is one beautiful release, and all. Uh, if you go on my blog, I put all of the inspiration, the design team members, wow, they're so talented. They are talented, and they are making some pretty cool cards with all of these dies and everything. Yeah, I'm still thinking, should I do that? But no, I don't want to do that. But they are making some pretty lovely cards with this collection. So I am leaving the links for you to just go and press the link and you will get to go over there. So I have a baby wipe and I'm pressing a little bit of the Extreme Clean Cleaner, the best cleaner on the market. Oh yes, LDRS Creative Extreme Clean. You, you have to have it. It's beautiful. Now, I am using this square, but I did not want to darken the edges. Watch the difference if I darken them. It brings those beautiful, um, that beautiful design, it pushes it in and I didn't like that. I wanted it to look like it was like uh, in the ocean and as soon as I did this I stopped. I even took I think a little uh, cube of the raven, what I have left of it. I've used two cubes and one large um, actual stamp of the raven. Can you believe it? That's how much I use it. And I love hybrid inks. Hybrid inks give you time to uh, emboss. That's what's lovely. And they're so juicy. So watch. Now this looks nice if I wasn't going for just this beautiful creamy look. Uh, but because I was, I had to give it up and cut it off. And I ran it through my uh, Zyron, of course. And we're going to actually cut some gray. That's the, the paper color I decided to go with because the outside of this stencil is gray. So I had this beautiful thick gray paper and I decided to use it. And I am going to use the LDRS Creative wood grain paper for this. So it's going to be beautiful. And we're going to get some fun things. You know that paper? I'm really talking fast tonight, aren't I? I'm sorry. I want to make sure. I'm going to try to get this video up before 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to see. And when I put my paper on, I only take half of the release paper. Then I drag it off. Because sometimes if you take all of the back of the Xyron paper off, it'll really stick. And you won't get it up. And then you have some serious um, thinking you're going to have to do to remedy it. So, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to distress it with my Tim Holtz distress tool because 
I am putting a little bit of vintage vibe into this. Oh yes. Uh, I thought of a couple of funny things I wanted to share with you on this video when I was out today. And do you think I can remember them? I can't. Oh, it's crazy. They say you have to share something three times and then you remember it. But I don't know. I think I could do it 30 times and I would still forget. <laughs> oh. So everybody, did you have a good day today? I hope so. And uh, the weather's hot, isn't it? Oh, it was in the high 90s here. And the humidity from Niagara Falls, oh my, you could hardly take a breath. And I worked outside in that. Generally, I don't go out. Oh, I'm taking a marker here, Copic Friendly Marker, and I am just going over it because I rink, I did stamp I Love You on there, but I crinkled it, right? I took my stylus, I really worked that paper out of it, and now I want to get some real, I want to accentuate those lines when I was uh, crinkling it like that. So I put some color on it, that's how you do it. And then to get a better uh, crinkled look, to make it look old, take a layer of your paper off. Because this is thick paper and I want it to really bend and mold and manipulate it so it looks like it was really weathered inside this glass bottle. Even though it's to the test of time, it still looks weathered. That was what was in my mind, you know. So I took half of the paper off the back. Now we're going to stamp this. I could have put uh, real twine on there, but why would I? Look at this beautiful piece of twine stamp. It's gorgeous. Yes, that I'm going to put it in gold. That's what I'm doing there. That is the LDRS Creative Watermark. It's like Versamark. It's beautiful, juicy. You can see I use all these products a lot, a lot. And this watermark I use a lot. And now I have to order some Stream Clean because it cleans everything. It cleans your stamps so that their packages are all nice. And I'm gonna take my knife and add that little hole on there. And I shouldn't be doing it on this mat. This is the wrong mat. This isn't a cutting mat, I don't think. I don't think it is. I think it's just for using ink. I'm not sure if that is a actual cutting mat. Hmm. I'll have to look that up. But uh, let's see, uh, we're looking at this. It did seem like a long time because the coloring. I had, th these I got at the dollar store when nothing's a dollar. They're really thin cork and they're all in ovals. So I thought, I'm gonna use that on my cover. And I can't stop staring at that stencil. I really can't stop staring at it. I think it's gorgeous. I think the creator that I don't know if Angie created this, but if you did, Angie, you did a great job. It's beautiful, beautiful how it's just moving all over. Oh, yes, and it has sticky back on that cork. So I put some, I cut the cork off the bottle, the stamped bottle, and I put cork over top so that, um, yeah, I'm going to make it look like the paper came out of the bottle so that I didn't have to have it, uh, I would have had to lighten it up. Let me just say this. I would have had to lighten the colors up if I put um, the paper there, you know, uh, in the bottle. So you really are losing the effect of the glass look, but you could do either or, and you know what's nice? You could use stays on ink on your acetate, and you could make this beautiful, um, bottle out of acetate and get, you know, use your uh, alcohol inks. Oh, would that look beautiful? Oh, I'm going to have to do that on one of the matching cards. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Plus, I'm making a lot of cards to put index files in. These are my uh, black uh, dimensionals. They're not really high up. They're just right, and I love them because they're black. Yes, I got these years ago. I think it's from the Sticky Store. The Sticky Stuff Store. I'll leave a link. I hope it's still there. 
I'll leave a link because I did buy it about four years ago. But I will check that out for you and leave a link, of course. And look at that. I mean, that alone with that stencil and a sentiment would be a great card, wouldn't it? I wouldn't have had to go much farther, but, you know, being it is a cookbook, a seaside fish cookbook. <laughs> I didn't put fish, though, it, it, but it is going to have all fish, seafood. I shouldn't say just fish, seafood recipes. So here comes the design. Yes. Maureen had asked me uh, on Angie's channel tonight. I think she asked Angie, and I crazily butted in. I didn't mean to, but I wasn't sure whether Maureen was talking to Angie or talking to me. And she said, uh, how do you come up with your ideas? Like, are they quick, or do you, um, you know, write them down or whatever? But I realized later it was for Angie. <laughs> Sorry I answered, Angie, and uh, sorry, Maureen, I kind of hogged the time there, but uh, she had asked, uh, you know, how does your inspiration come? And mine comes when I look at the product, and then I start creating. As I create, you can tell when you watch my tutorials, I change things up because as I'm looking at it, the design comes to me, and I change it up and put it back, change it up, put it back. And uh, that's a nice way to design, actually, because you get more ideas for other cards, other projects when you do that. So here we go. And am I tired? I am super tired. Yes, very tired today. And I did get in the pool at 15 minutes. I got in for some, uh, when we got home from the shop, uh, we were separating um, pipe, yes, uh, copper, because copper was really high. It was almost $4 a pound. So we were separating it, the three different grades of copper, and it was, you know, I had to keep bending down. And I was tired when I got home. Boy, that's a full day. Now I know what my husband, you know, when he goes to make sheet metal and that for furnace it, you know, putting air conditioners in and that. Oh, what a job. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. You're, oh, he saw that piece of wood and he couldn't resist. Oh, at least it didn't stop, right? Now I have to miter a corner. I'm, I'm not getting it. There we go. I got it down. You just want to cut opposite sides of your uh, paper and the miter together and look like a frame. And I love the way that this is, this paper has the wood at different sections, right? It really does, and, and it's in a teal blue. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I loved working, you know, I know I say it all the time, I get super excited, and uh, I really do love working with this. Uh, and here I'm just doing paper dot ink. Yeah, I'm just grabbing that ink and making the sides a little lighter. Then we're going to put it down. To me, it looked like a soccer net right there, doesn't it? You could do that on a boy's card, and that could be a soccer net. I, you know, it can be a mermaid shimmer stencil or a soccer net. Look at that. That came to my mind, too. You know, if you had images for little boys, birthday boys. Now, see this paper? Quickly, I'm going to talk 100 miles an hour. I cut every image out of that paper, every single little image. I fussy cut it. I sat down and literally fussy cut all of it. And look at there they there it is. And remember I talked about having that cheese in my fridge, you know that has that uh, waxy stuff and you uh, grab the tab and then each side comes off. It's such a good cheese. Well there's the wrap for it and I thought, oh, I have to make a net. Can you see that? Yes. Ooh, my brain was working. I'm making a net. And I'm going to put all of those wonderful seashells, sea dollars. Um, right here I'm adding that thick. I decided to use the Nouveau glue. It's thicker and um, easy to work with. So what I did is I made the paper kind of wavy and put some dimensionals underneath. And it's coming out of the bottle. I want to have that navy. I want to ground this 
uh, light colors with the navy. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put this, but it actually is in the upper right corner. The tie is going to be up there. And it's, you know, it doesn't take away from the stencil that you did because it's see-through, it's white, it's a net that's collecting all these beautiful shells to enjoy. And um, yeah, it's not for the fish, it's for the beautiful seashells and the sand dollars and all that kind of stuff. And the bottle, of course, the bottle. So here we go, we're going to put the, I, I used hot glue because you can't see it. So I used a little bit of hot glue in the corners. I made sure because it's white on white, I made sure that some of it was on top of the glass bottle so you could see that there was a fishnet there. Now once we had all of that beautiful paper fussy cut out, uh, there's these shells, they're so beautiful. There's two different uh, designs on them. I took my pearls and I wanted to put a pearl inside. So I did the inside in gold, my gold Copic, and then I put the pearl in there and so that the reason why I did the gold like that I wanted to be able to see the pearl I wanted the pearl to just jump right at it, out at you so I did two of these well I did many of these um, shells but I put the pearl in there and this way with the dark background you can see the pearl when I put the lid on it you know the shell lid and I I did two of them, excuse me, I did two of them. So uh, I'm going to put the liquid glue on there, then I'm going to place it on the top of our uh, net, our netting. And it is coming together, don't you love the rope? That's a stamp. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. So here we have it, we have a pearl inside of our lovely shell. Does not look pretty, it looks real, I'm not kidding. And I had fun, you know, decorating this because some of the, like, starfish you want to put under the net. Some of it you want to put on top. You have your pearl shells, and you can put those on the top and on the bottom. Your sand dollars, you can put them all over. And it really didn't take away the look of this bottle with a note in it. I don't think it did. Uh, I think it looks really pretty and it's kind of worked itself off the beach and uh, it tipped over and let out the uh, lovely note, I love you. You can see that and then you're going to be able to see the cork, you know. And this is two layers, by the way, right, because my cheese was in there, my cheese, all my little cheese uh, packets something I can't remember that it's it's kind of a red orange rubber over top of the cheese then you separate it like you pull it back and it's like wax not rubber sorry it's wax yeah so my little fishies going underneath the net best fishes it says that you have to admit this is a gorgeous set and what's nice too is you get to use the inks your hybrid inks when you stamp you're not having to color this in. These are uh, full stamps, you know. Uh, they have the dark background. Oh, look at my wrists. They're, they're cute. They are still itchy and peeling. Yucky. Yes, very yucky. So, did, did you have hot water? I'd like hot water. Did you have, I hope you had hot water. Did you have hot weather? See what happens to my brain when it's really late at night or early in the morning. But we're doing pretty good. I'm talking pretty fast, and it's 1.30 now. So I started at midnight, and now it's 1.30. Quarter after 12, right? That's when I started. And here's my other uh, shell. I left it lighter. I kept the inside light. Look at the little pearls in there. I think it's so cute. I just bent them up and cupped them up, and they look really pretty. And I, my eye is drawn to that gold rope around the glass uh, bottle. This set, this set, I'm telling you, if you could see it, it is so well used. And I'm going to put that anchor, you know, at the bottom, and uh, it has a sentiment on it already. You don't have to put one on there. So that's kind of cool. And look at, 
this could be a card. Oh yes, I wanted to have some stuff falling out of the onto the shore. Some of all of this uh, sea related. Look at the blue shell. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, and that's all in the paper. This is all colored already. You don't even have to color it. All you have to do is fussy cut. And you have all of this beautiful paper to put on your card. And for me, it's my cover. So, um, yeah, I was real excited about this release. I really was. I couldn't wait to get started. You're going to really like the back of this card. The back, you know, and then we're finished and we'll put the uh, book together on the next tutorial so you can see what it looks like and then we're going to fill the book with cards and index files for your recipes and then we will do a surprise to give it away I don't know how I'm going to do that yet but I think this would make a lovely gift recipe books are, are nice to get aren't they um, do you I'd like to know in the comments if you collect recipe books. That you know, with the internet and that, we've lost the, uh, you know, the personal things. Like I have my mom's recipes, and she did it on a flip um, ringed recipe book. It, it, you just turn the round circle, and they all of her recipes just uh, go, you know, around in a circle. And she gave. For Christmas one year, each of her daughters, this, you know, four of us, that's what she made for us, all of her recipes. And I told you, she's from Newfoundland, so this is like, she knows fish, let me tell you. And she knows lobsters, she knows jigging, she knows it all. Oh yes, she loves her homeland of Newfoundland. Uh, let's see, you're going to have a 4th of July, right? Your 4th of July is coming up. And that would be, to, is it tomorrow? No, two days. Tomorrow's the 3rd. And here we go. I don't know why I'm covering that up, but uh, we're getting close to the end here, my friends. I do hope everybody that is viewing my tutorials that uh, for LDRS Creative that you like the idea of doing a recipe book. I could have kept it all cards, yes, that's true, but I thought, you know, this is like a nice project to give as a gift and to, you know, a friend, to relatives. It's just a lovely book and because we're keeping it on all of uh, fish recipes and beautiful seafood recipes, I think it would be a fun, fun project. And we are going to have cards. Yes, remember I said I'm going to incorporate them right into the pages so that you can put your index filed cards. I have a die that makes the index files. And uh, then at the end, I'm going to try to get a box to match using the LDRS Creative products. I have uh, a box that has been in my mind to create and I'm really hoping I'm going to have time to do that. It's also nice too to make the, the glass uh, bottle to look like it's coming out from the net and coming off of the shore and out of the water onto the cork there, onto the sand or the land and then bring some of your little card pieces that you fussy cut out of the collection and because the paper is so wonderfully thick they cut out beautifully and <laughs> add some little pearls in there in your uh, you know in your little shells it looks so cute everything in the it, the colors everything match and I love the fish the way it says best fishes so cute look at that doesn't it all come together you can cluster some of them um, but I wanted to share with you, I ended up putting a, a strip of black paper on the bottom because I have a sentiment in the left corner down at the bottom I decided to use in the uh, set. You know, I wanted to use a separate sentiment, you know, a nice uh, thin one. 
using black cardstock because I thought, yeah, I'll show you that it's kind of, well, I have it the wrong way here. But even looking at it like this, I think this would make a pretty card. Yeah, I can't wait to work on the back. You can see I had the pages all ready to go, but I had to cut that off back there. Yes, that was not doing anything for me. Well, it's 20 to 2. I'll probably get this done around 10 to 2. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I sure enjoyed spending time with you. I wanted to show you how this isn't going to work with holding the pages. It just is, you know, it's really thick full of pages in there. And the stretchy, I didn't want it to do any damage to the actual design of the book. And especially if it did something to our wonderful seaside seagull there. You don't want to do anything right with our seaside seagull. And uh, so here we go. Have yourself a blessed week. I will leave the links on my blog. Please check out the LDRS Creative Collection. You're going to love it. There's so much in there that it is amazing. It is amazing. So I am off to do the edit and voiceover to the back of the card, which is so colorful. Here we go. Oh, yes. I will see you. Uh, oh, yeah, that's it. We're finished. Bye now. See you later.